Dr. Ravi Batra on the line with us, professor of economics at Southern Methodist University, international best-selling author of numerous books, including two of my favorites, Greenspan's Fraud and The New Golden Age, The Coming Revolution Against Political Corruption and Economic Chaos. Yeah, you can find all, all out all about all of it at his website, Ravi Batra, R-A-V-I-B-A-T-R-A dot com. Um, Dr. Batra, we're talking about how this... Um, you know, starting with this, uh, maybe the lit fuse of Cyprus, how this may play out. Spain now has uh, 25, 30 percent unemployment. Greece has very, very high unemployment. The, uh, the, the, the Germans and the, 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 the wealthier European states are perceived increasingly as plunderers across Europe. Um, what, and yet, and in here in the United States, because of Reaganomics and, and these insane free trade policies, we've we, you know, we're, our own middle class has been wiped out. Is this the disaster capitalism that uh, Naomi Klein talked about? Is this creating a disaster and then profiting off of it? Or is this just the consequence of misguided uh, ideology, th almost a theology, the Milton Friedman theology? Well, uh, see, I have another theory called the law of social cycle. And I wrote that... Uh, about that law in 1978, predicting the downfall of both Soviet communism and monopoly capitalism. And I wrote in that book that Soviet communism would collapse by the year 2000, and then monopoly capitalism would get into big trouble around 2010. <laughs> and then I updated all that stuff in, in the books that you talked about, and in the update I wrote that by 2016, we should see a collapse of monopoly capitalism all over the world. So that's what we are seeing now. The trouble is there in Europe, but the United States being the kind of uh, mother country of this uh, uh, monopoly capitalist capitalistic system, uh, it, it's still a bit uh, immune from those headwinds. Uh, but things are going to be pretty bad soon here also because the budget deficit is beginning to fall. And the falling budget deficit is what causes uh, these systems to fall because uh, wages are stagnant. So what would you, is, is, is this just going to be a situation of the crash is going to happen, people are going to realize the error of their ways, and we'll go on? I, I, is that how you see this, and, you know, and we'll figure out something, an alternative to this? Is that what you see playing out? That's right. We, I see an alternative to the system. And that the coming the new system will be one of economic democracy. See, we need a we need a system where wages automatically rise when productivity does, mm. uh, because un unless that happens, we have to keep increasing our budget deficits and postpone the problem on to the future generations, uh, our children. Right. So it's it's a horrible system. And plus, just look at this: in the past three years. Uh, from 2009 to 2012, the budget deficit was one and a half trillion dollars. And the justification was that we need this to create jobs. Now, we created one million jobs in every year over the past three years and spent one and a half trillion dollars to create one million jobs. If you divide one and a half trillion by one million, you get one and a half million. So we spent one and a half million dollars to create one job which pays only $50,000 on average. So where is the rest going? It's going all to the rich rich people and the, our budget deficits are, are enriching the rich at the fastest possible pace and our government keeps wondering why are the rich getting richer? You know, uh, Arnold Toynbee, I believe it was, said that when the last man who remembers the horrors of the last great war dies, the next great war becomes inevitable. And uh, Steve Keen, an Australian economist on our program uh, earlier or last week, suggested that the, the main thing that constrained banksters up until the 1970s was that most of the people in a position of power in the banking industry remembered the last Great Depression. And that when they started dying off and the boomers who were born after the Great Depression started taking those positions of power and they had no recollection of bankers run amok, uh, then the next crash became inevitable, or the next banking scandal. Um, is this 
how, how does that fit in with your theory of social cycles, and, and does that, this all make sense to you? Oh, yes, it certainly does. In fact, <laughs> I've been writing about this kind of scenario for the past 30 years. Right. And uh, this is all part of the law of social cycle. The law of social cycle uh, is, 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 a, uh, is an inevitable law of nature. I have studied uh, history over the past 5,000 years, and I found that in every civilization, uh, there, was, there were revolutions. The age of acquisitors ended up in the throes of revolutions. And, and toward the end of that age of acquisitors, there was so much wealth concentration, and people had to constantly borrow money to survive, that in the end, they simply overthrew the rule of money in society, and then a new age was born. So now, our monopoly capitalism is that age of acquisitors towards its end. In the new system, we, were, we would have economic democracy, in which uh, the uh, majority shares of large corporations will be in the hands of employees themselves. Mm. So the CEOs would, would be answerable to, to the employees, and then when productivity goes up, automatically wages would rise. When that happens, we don't need any kind of government intervention. We don't need budget deficits at all to keep employment high. Now, the German Constitution, at the uh, suggestion of Harry Truman, uh, has built into it, and this was you know, Truman was fighting the Republicans on labor unions really, really hard. I mean, to the point that they overrode his veto on Taft-Hartley. Um, has built, built into it a statement that any corporation that employs more than a thousand people has to have half of the member, half of the seats on its board of directors occupied by representatives of organized labor uh, of the labor unions that work in that corporation. Is that? representation of labor in the German industrial society, is that one of the reasons, in your opinion, why Germany hasn't collapsed the way so many of the other countries around it have? Because they their wages have kept up? It definitely is. It definitely is. And their system comes close to economic democracy, although in, uh, in, in a democratic economy, you don't have the need for unions, uh, because unions uh, are the majority owners. Uh, right. So... Uh, so uh, you won't even need unions at, at, in, in a democratic e e economic system. Do you see what's what's happened in Argentina since two thousand one, two thousand two, where so many so many of the factory owners fled the country and people just went in, reopened the factories, took them over, and now you've got a lot of worker-owned cooperatives in Argentina. Is that the sort of thing you're talking about? That's right. That's that, that, that that's exactly what we are talking about. In large corporations, the majority shares will be in the hands of the employees, whereas in smaller companies, there will be co-ops. Uh, mm. And, and in, that, in, in, in such a system, uh, whenever somebody becomes more productive, automatically their wages would rise. And when that happens, you don't need any government interference, you don't need any budget deficits, you don't need to print a lot of money and, and risk inflation, you don't have stock market bubbles and crashes or housing bubbles and crashes. You have a great economic system when you have a democratic economy. And by the way, there is evolution of society over time. So uh, oh, through that evolution, we have reached the stage of political democracy. The next stage is one of economic democracy. How do we, uh, in, in, the, in the process of getting there, how do, we, how, do we move, how do we make that transition? Well, I think there is going to be another big, major stock market crash, and then the stock prices would, would fall sharply. The government would be able to buy these shares uh, dirt cheap and then sell these shares uh, on installment basis to employees, and that takes care of it. So the government would have to intervene to do this. How do you restrain a new billionaire class from forming out of this? How do you keep what happened, you know, like the oligarchs who, who rose up in, in many of the uh, former Soviet states? Uh, how do you prove that? Because, you know, everybody got to own their apartment, everybody had a share in the company, sort of like what you're describing, and then people went around and bought up those shares from people who didn't realize their value, aggregated them, and now, boom, you've got your back to, you know, hyper-billionaires. How do you prevent that from happening? Well, through a responsive government. Uh, mm -hmm. After all, uh, our American oligarchs tried to prevent Obama's election in 2008, didn't they? And then again, they tried their best in 2012. And remember, I was on your show again and again, and I said, Obama is going to be re-elected, mm -hmm. no matter what. And... Uh, See, 2009 was 
the beginning of this revolution, mm-hmm. the election of a black candidate as president was, was unprecedented, and that was the start of the, this revolution. And it takes about seven, seven and a half years before the revolution succeeds. So that's why I have chosen the year 2016. Uh, nine, uh, 2009 plus 7 is 2016. And I think that's the year when monopoly capitalism collapses in the United States. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. Um, Dr. Batra, uh, another four minutes of your time, if we may? Sure. Okay, thank you. We'll be right back. 45 minutes past the hour. Tom Hartman here with you. Dr. Ravi Batra on the line with us. Ravi Batra, R-A-V-I-B-A-T-R-A dot com is his website. His most recent books, Greenspan's Fraud, and, of course, The New Golden Age, The Coming Revolution Against Political Corruption and Economic Chaos, in which he foresaw all this stuff that's happening right now.